Welcome to my series of videos on mathematics for economists. In this video I'm going to talk about the geometry of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And in order to understand what's going on in this video, you have to watch the video on basis change first. So in case you haven't already done so, uh, I recommend that you close this video and first watch the one on basis change. So here I'm going to consider uh, this 2 by 2 matrix that we have already uh, considered in that video on basis change. And there are two distinct eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors that we have here for this matrix. So this is lambda 1 equal to 2 and lambda 2 equal to 3. And the first eigenvector is corresponding to lambda 1 is given by 1 and 1 and the second eigenvector is minus 1 and 1 corresponding to lambda 2 equal to 3. And so we have the eigenvalue decomposition which is 1 minus 1 1 1. This is the matrix P that consists of the uh, eigenvectors, the diagonal matrix that has the eigenvalues on the diagonal, and the inverse of the matrix P, which is given by 1 half, 1 half, minus 1 half, 1 half, half uh, as you may want to calculate, or as you may remember from the last video. Okay, in the video on basis change, we saw that the, the rightmost matrix P inverse is the basis change matrix which when right multiplied by a vector given in standard coordinates is going to return the f coordinates. The f coordinates, the basis f, is the basis given by the two eigenvectors, v1 and v2, 1, 1, and minus 1 and 1. And the standard coordinates are the coordinates given by the standard basis vectors. And since we are in uh, R2 here and the matrix is 2 by 2, uh, these are the two standard basis vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. Yeah? So we wrote that this matrix, which is P1, P inverse in the, um, in the eigenvalue decomposition, is the basis change matrix from S to F, and we found it by stacking the f coordinates of the standard basis into the columns of the matrix. So the f coordinates of the standard basis e1 and e2 in the columns of the matrix. Yeah? Of course we can also find it by solving the eigenvalue and eigenvector problem and then inverting the matrix that consists of the uh, of the eigenvectors in the columns, which always exists because eigenvectors of distinct eigenvalues are linearly independent, and so the matrix has full rank. We can also find it uh, in the way we've shown in the basis change video. Okay. We also saw 
and that P, which then of course is the inverse, so it's the inverse of the basis change matrix from S to F, is the basis change matrix in the reverse direction, so from F to S, uh, which is now numerically given by 1, minus 1, 1, and 1 in this example here. So this is the basis change matrix. from F to S. Now I promised I would talk about the geometry of eigenvalues and, and eigenvectors and in order to do so I'm asking the question what happens, and I mean that geometrically, if we multiply matrix A with a vector and let me use the vector x equal to 1, 3 that I used in the basis change video before. Okay, well, let's have a look at it. a times x is eigenvalue decomposition, p d p inverse times x is interpretation as basis change matrices, matrices. the basis change from F to S times a diagonal times the basis change from S to F times X which is given of course in its standard coordinates so I can write it as the as the notation that we introduced in the basis change uh, uh, video the standard coordinates of X C underscore uh, C subscript S of X we saw in the basis change video that if I right multiply the standard coordinates of a vector x to the basis change matrix from S to F, which takes the S coordinates and then returns the F coordinates, of course I'm going to obtain the F coordinates of the point x, of the vector x. And I can now do this with the numerical values that I have here, uh, but we also remember from the basis change video that this was the vector 2 and 1. The f coordinates of x were 2, 1, meaning that x can be written as 2 times v1 plus 1 times v2. Yeah. So far so good. So now we have understood the first part of this product here. This is going to give us the f coordinates of x or it's going to change the coordinates of x from standard to f. Next comes the multiplication with the diagonal matrix which is 2, 0, 0, 3 times the vector 2, 1, and if I just do this numerically, of course I get uh, 4 and 3, and I recognize 4 and 3 as the f coordinates of y. The f coordinates of y. In other words, y, which we remember as 1 and 7, has the representation 4 times v1 plus 3 times v2 in terms of the basis f. So now I have the f coordinates of y, so I have applied the linear mapping that is associated to the matrix A, but in the F world, not in the S world, not in the standard world, but in the world that is given by the F coordinate system. And in the F coordinate system, it's particularly easy because all I need to do is I need to multiply the entries with the diagonal elements. Yeah, I just take 2 times 2 and 3 times 1. But that only gives me the f-coordinates of y, and of course in the end I'm interested in the standard coordinates of y. 
and in order to get the standard coordinates of y, I have to multiply the f coordinates with the basis change matrix from f to s, and that's exactly what's standing here. So that's then 1 and minus 1, 1 and 1, times 4 and 3, and we get, of course, 1 and 7, which is our vector y, or the standard coordinates of y. Where's the geometry, we may ask? Well, here it is. So, we take the vector x, right here, 1 and 3, the standard coordinates. Standard coordinates here, denoted by the standard coordinate system, multiples of the first standard basis vector, e1, and multiples of the second standard basis vector, e2, or, as we are used from high school, uh, x axis and y axis. Again, uh, as in the video on basis change, uh, the basis with, um, that is given by the eigenvalues 1, 1 and minus 1 and 1 is drawn in a different color. I hope you can see it, uh, that it's drawn in red. And you see here uh, we have these axes given by multiples of v1 and v2. And we have seen in the video on basis change that we can express the vector x in standard coordinates and you can see it here, the standard coordinates of course are 1 and 3, x and y, and I can express the vector x in f coordinates, and as you can see here, the f coordinates of x are 2 and 1. Multiplication, right multiplication of x to a, so forming the product a times x, results in y. y is given in standard coordinates by 1 and 7, 1 times the first plus 7 times the second standard basis vector, and it is given in f coordinates as v1, uh, f coordinates given by, by the vectors v1 and v2 as 4 and 3. And I have written 4 and 3 a bit funny here in the coordinate system. I've written 2 times 2 and 3 times 1 because this is precisely what is happening here. 2 times 2 and 3 times 1. So what's going on geometrically if we multiply the matrix A with the vector x is we take the standard coordinates of the x vector and we transform them, that's the p inverse part, the basis change from standard to f, we transform them to f coordinates of x. The f coordinates of x are chosen such, and this is the solution to the eigenvalue problem, are chosen such that applying the mapping f that corresponds to the matrix A amounts to simply forming multiples of the coordinates with respect to the f basis, and this is happening here. That is, we have switched the coordinate system such that applying the linear mapping given by the matrix A only amounts to stretching or shrinking the v1 and v2 directions of the f coordinates of the given vector x. The v1 direction here is, is uh, stretched by 2, and the v2 direction is stretched by 3. The original uh, f coordinates of x were 2 and 1, so we stretch 2 by 2 and 1 by 3, and we obtain the new f coordinates for the vector y 
as 4 and 3. Finally, we have to transform the f coordinates of y to standard coordinates of y, and that is the last, or actually the first matrix in the eigen, eigenvalue decomposition, the matrix P, which is the basis change matrix from f to s coordinates. So it takes the f coordinates of y, 4, and 3, and it returns the s coordinates, standard coordinates of y, 1, and 7. This is what's going on geometrically. Thanks for watching.